All right, you see this bedside right here? It has really been carved into. Somebody just dug all that out. It's got a dent in it. It's got body work on it. It's got Bondo. It's going to take a lot of time to repair this. Now, if it was just a small little thing right here, just some rust, I could go ahead and fix it. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. But when it's got this much time and trouble into it, what you're going to want to do is see what is more financially feasible. This is just not repairable for the amount of money we can get a new bedside for. My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single week showing you how to get your truck back on the road. Today we're going to go ahead and replace these beds because it's just too beat up. You stick around and I'll show you how. Okay, now a couple of days before I start a project like this, I'm gonna get some oil, I'm gonna get all the nuts and bolts. More than likely, they're all gonna be rusted, you're gonna have to cut or break them off anyway, but I like to see if I get lucky. The first bolts that you're gonna to wanna to notice are the big ones that are right on top of the bed right here. You're gonna have two in the front, you're gonna have two in the back, and it's just gonna be a carriage bolt like this. And uh, so I'll get those greased up and I'll climb underneath and I'll start trying to undo those. If they don't cooperate, I'll cut them off. I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Now let me climb underneath and show you the bolts that you got to do under there. Now I want you to take a look at this right here. Can you see how that's square? So that's known as what's known as a carriage bolt. When I put the bolt in there, it has a square on the top of it. And when I put it in there, it'll hold it while I'm bolting it from the bottom or unbolting it from the bottom. But more than likely, that bolt that's in there is going to be rusted. Now what you can try to do is go ahead and get somebody on the top to push down on this so it won't move when you're trying to unscrew that and see if you get lucky or not. If you don't, you're going to have to cut it out. All right. Now down here in the corner, you're going to have four bolts. There's going to be two on this side right here and then there's going to be two on the inside of the sill plate right here. So we've got to get those guys out, and then I'll show you what comes next. Now this is a support right here that just keeps this bedside from flopping in and out, and you're going to have it in the front and back of the wheel opening. So get these guys off right here. So now I've got a buddy holding the bolts at the top, and I'm going to climb underneath, and we're going to see if um, they come off for us or not. You don't want to use an impact on this because if you do, it will round out that square opening. So go ahead and be nice and gentle. See if you get lucky or not, and then escalate the situation if you have to. One of the common things I like to say is obstacle overcome, obstacle overcome. That's really what building hot rods is. So none of these bolts are cooperating, none of them are coming off, and that's more than likely going to happen to you too. So let's go to step number two on how to take these bolts out, get a little more mean on them. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a slot on the top and hold it with the screwdriver, see if that works. So it goes a little like this. All right, go ahead and hold that for me and I'll see if they can come out. All right. All right, so that's working, that's good, but the bolts are just not gonna last. So when you're doing something like this, make sure that you're getting all of your peripherals. You're definitely gonna need the nuts and bolts. We got them just regular old steel, or you can get them in stainless steel. You need a little bit more bling. I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the rest of the bolts. If I run into any more problems, I'll be back and let you know what's up. All right, so some bolts are not coming out that well. So here's the next thing that you want to do. Get yourself something that looks like a hatchet or what have you, and hopefully your bedwood is already bad, or otherwise you can't use this trick. But you're going to go ahead and you're going to bust the bedwood out so that you can go ahead and get a cutting wheel up underneath there. Now technically speaking, if you just get these three off in the back and in the front, you'll be able to take the bedside off uh, without taking off the tub, then you'll be able to get to these bolts in here easier, but you you have to make sure that the bed wood is going to be separated all the way up there and get that on off. So I'm going to get that set up. Let's see how long it takes me. 
So now some of the bolts down here, let's say you don't want to take your bed wood off, it's in nice shape and all. You can get to a lot of these bolts really easy from underneath. You're just going to cut below the bolt, but above the washer so you don't do any damage to your wood. Now, it's a little bit more difficult in here because this has the uh, support. In case that, what I'll do is I'll simply cut the bolt in half and that'll generally make it loose enough to where it'll unbolt the rest of the way. If it won't, I'll just keep cutting the remnants of the bolt and the nut off until it comes out all together. Okay, next I'm going to take the tailgate off here. Now you've got 916s here normally, but this has been taken out and left out. And then there's one on the bottom down here. So normally I'll take this off first, but since it's missing, we don't have to worry about that. I'll bring this back up and we'll take off the bolt on the bottom here. I only need to take one side off and I'll show you why here in just one second. Okay. All right, with that out, we simply come up I'm just going to come up high enough to where I can pull the hinge out and then it'll come off like that. So I want you to notice this weld right here at the top. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cut into that a little bit. We don't want to do any damage to our bottom sill plate here. It's okay if we damage our bedside because we're taking it off. And a lot of times there's a weld down here at the bottom too. So just cut these gingerly and then you can rock the uh, ped panel back and forth and uh, break these off the rest of the way. All right, so you just have three obvious bolts that are in the front right here. So we're going to get these off. Three off down there. I can get the two off on the top right here. They're kind of hidden. You just need to move your bed back a little bit. So we're all ready to go. Oh, I forgot about the electrical. You got to get out of there. Not only will you have electrical for your lights, you're more than likely going to have a ground strap down there too. So go searching for that and we'll get all those disconnected and then we'll get this guy off. All right, my wires are off. I've double checked everything else. Now we're just going to wiggle this back and forth until the well breaks the rest of the way and lift it on off. Okay, there you go. All right. Go ahead and lay it down. Bring it down. So you can see you don't have to take the tub off in order to get the bed off. Now I've got all these bolts exposed to me nice and easy and I can take them off the rest of the way. I'll go ahead and click this cleaned up a little bit and get prepared more. We'll get the bedside out of the box and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got a brand new bolt kit to put all this back together again, but one of the things I like to do is get some of these assembly bolts right here too. And the reason is, is that you see the point on that? When you're putting these together and your holes don't line up, this is going to be really um, instrumental in getting that to work out. It'll go in and line up your panels at the same time, so to speak. You still have to be careful, not cross thread and get it crooked and such. But you'll notice this one here has a blunt end on it, so it's a bit more difficult to get in if the holes aren't lined up. So get both of these guys, get everything assembled with this, and then you can swap out for the bling. Now let's say everything's all painted and it's all brand new and looking really good. We don't want to do any damage to this right here. When we're putting our bedsides on, we're just going to get it onto the edge right here and we're going to slowly move it forward. A lot of times what I like to do is put tape right here too so I won't go too far. If you go too far, you're going to scratch this up and then you're going to have to push it back and you're going to be left with that. So take your time, a couple of little tricks, help keep your paint nice and clean, baby. And of course, if this is all painted, you're going to put tape or uh, some uh, cardboard right up in here to keep your cab nice. Okay, so now he's going to get his started on there. We want to go nice and straight with this. If it gets e uneven, it makes it more difficult to install. So I'll get this on here and I'll get a bolt started on this. While well, he's holding that, after this side's secure, then we'll get that side. 
All right, so now I've only got this loosely on. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down. We've got to do some measurements and miscellaneous things before we final it up. It's basically just doing in reverse what you had. We've got our bolt kit right here, and we're finding the correct bolts and just getting them in, but we're not tightening anything up just yet. Let me get this other side done, and I'll show you what comes next. Now I've got my other bedside on. I've got my tubs just lightly bolted up, as are my bedsides, because we're still going to have to do some adjustments and stuff before we tighten everything up. Now I want you to take a look at this washer right here. See how it's got that square hole in it and it's off center? That's what's known as a cam washer. And what happens is you'll notice on the top of this uh, bolt right here, carriage bolt, that it is squared also. So those two pieces are going to line up like that. And what happens is, is that your hole that you have in the wood right here, it'll be off center a little bit and you'll just stick this bolt in there and then line it up so it all fits in. We'll get a washer, a lock washer and a nut on there. I'll just have it snug so that I can still move things around because I got to do some measurements before I final things up. I'm also going to get all of our carriage bolts that are going in here and um, I know you're probably looking at this thinking, Dave, what are you doing? This is old wood. We've got plenty of videos on how to install your bed wood kit. So we're not going to spend time on that today. I'll put a link down below for you and you can watch those when you get some more time. Everything's up. Everything's um, just about re ready to tighten. I'm going to put my tailgate on now. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to have my tailgate, uh, my bedsides here, spread apart a little bit. If I had this all squared up and these were close together, when I put my tailgate on and I'm sliding the hinge down here, it's likely that it's going to scratch. So if this is all painted up, get some tape on right here, and then we'll go ahead and install the tailgate. I've installed one hinge on that side. We're going to go ahead and install that on there. And then what will happen is we'll install this one right up in here. Put some grease on there, that kind of thing. And then you're just going to slide down nice and easy. We'll get the bolt started at the top. I'll get it snug. Then I'll get the bolt on the bottom. Then I'll line it up a little bit and then I'll finish tightening it up. All right, so you'll notice this slot right in here, and that is going to line up with this, and that should point right into the hole. You'll notice it doesn't. We're going to have to push this in, and this is why we don't tighten anything up just yet. Now we're going to go ahead and line everything up, and then we'll do our final fitment. So next we're going to square the bed. Now what that basically means is we're going to measure it diagonally, and the measurement should come out exactly the same on both sides. If it does, then you're square. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick this in the corner here. And we're going to measure it to our other corner. And I'm getting this here at about 103 inches. Okay, I'm actually getting lucky on this because we didn't replace the bed wood. Um, the bed just stayed all nice and square for us. But let's say, for instance, this was at 104 inches. Then I'm going to go ahead and have somebody hold that side secure. I'll bring this down some, and then it'll double check my measurements again. And when I got equal amounts on both sides, then I know I'm good. If I don't do this, then you'll have some oddities. Like a lot of times you'll see the bed woods, and they'll just be at a slight tilt. Maybe that side there will be all close to the cab, and then you'll have a big gap right over here. So we have to do our measurements, we got to get everything squared, and then we've got to tighten everything up. When we're tightening everything up, we're doing it in a specific order for a specific reason. The first thing I'm going to tighten is these guys right here. And I'm going to actually get my bed wood nice and squared. Then I've got my bedsides that are nice. I'll go ahead and I'll double check it by bringing up my tailgate. I'll make sure my lines right here are really nice. Then I can tighten my bolts back here and I can tighten my bolts here. After those are done, then I'm going to go ahead and take the bed uh, tub right here and I'm going to bolt onto where the wood is and finally I'll do these right here on the inside. Now the reason you're doing that is if you were to tighten this up first then it might take the tub and like kind of hold it up high or something or out of the um, 
position that you're going to want and we want it nice and firm to the ground or to the wood and then we can go ahead and do this if we do it the other way around when you do this it might bend the edges down and chip your paint and stuff so be specific in your order get this guy get this guy get the wood and then do the inside now that that's all set I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish off a few things else our old tailgate chains are just not going to hack it, of course, but don't take these things and just arbitrarily throw them away. You might have to remember, for instance, how this particular uh, bolt here went. And if you toss it, you're not going to remember and you're going to have to experiment with it. But what's going to happen is that's going to go through there like that. This is a uh, lock bolt on here. And what it is for is when you adjust your tailgate chain, uh, this bolt right here is going to go in here. And I'll tighten that up to the right location. And then what I'll do is I'll have this, I'll get this set up, and then I'll go ahead and finish this lock bolt right here. So it kind of works like a lock washer, if you will. So when you're doing this, we're gonna make sure that our bottom is lining up nice, and then we'll tighten these guys. And then when this goes on, the actual correct way to do this, this is the way you normally see people do it, but the way you're supposed to do is come in from the bottom, come up, and then like that. It's also a good idea to get the little plastic covers right here, keep from banging on your paint. And uh, now I'll go ahead and take uh, and put in my lights. We got a lot of choices in lights, LEDs, and all kinds of stuff like that. So let me see what I like, and I'll go ahead and install it. All right, so I'm putting in my lights and everything. One helpful handy hint when you're putting these in is that just because you screwed them in does not mean it's gonna make a good ground. So I like to put a separate wire on my light housing here and then run it down to my frame so I'm sure that I've got a good ground. So that's basically it. We're all set up. You can see it's not really that big of a deal. I would like to add one last thing though. When I installed this, I'm using the old panel, I'm using the old sill, and using the old tailgate. All of my bolt holes lined right up. I didn't have to waller out anything. I didn't have to make any holes bigger. It bolted right onto my old stuff. The quality of parts that you can get these days is just amazing. So, you be sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I am here getting dirty every single week so we can get your truck back on the road. We'll see you there, man.